Hey y'all. Okay, so I messed up, so I'm having to start over. This is take two of Friday's lesson. Um, you are looking at Desmos calculator. We'll be using that a lot today in class. Let me come back over to my notes page. All right, so we are working on graphing logs. So if you look at what we've talked about or what I've already recorded, I'm going to come back and re-record is that our parent function is f of x equals log x. Now, if you hate f of x, remember you can always let that be y. That's not that big of a deal, but um, that's how you'll see it like right here. This is our parent function. So they wanted you to use a graphing calculator to sketch this out. Lots of us don't have a graphing calculator at home. If you do, you can use your graphing calculator, but I'm gonna click over to Desmos. That's why I was there. So you can see the first one that I have entered in here is my log function. It's just y equals log x. You can see that graph right there. It crosses at 1, 0. So to do this and type this in Desmos, you just click in this first box here. Because it's common log, you can just type log and then space and put your x. So that's going to give you common log. Now, the second one on your note sheet that you're supposed to be writing or uh, typing in is f of x equals 10x. So you can do f of x. It's got your parentheses. What just happened? Sorry. f of x equals 10. And then if you want to put it to a certain power, you use this button here. If you can see my little pointer finger, the a to the b power. And I want to raise that to the x power. Now, then you can see that one graphed in green. So it's got your blue graph here and your green graph there. We talked about this in class before we left for the coronavirus that these are going to be inverses of one another. You can see here that this is at 0, 1, and this one is at 1, 0. They are inverses, and they are um, they are inverses of each other, which means they are reflected over the linear parent function. If I graph the linear parent function, y equals x on here, you can see that is the linear parent function. If this was one big piece of paper and I folded it on top of each other on the linear parent function, the green would map itself on top of the blue. You can see this one has an inverse here on the x-axis. This one has an inverse here on the y-axis. So they are inverses of one another. Um, you can also see that on the table. Let me see if I can go to the table of this one. Yeah, convert to table. That's not very helpful. If you convert to table, then you can kind of enter down and see some other data. I need some good points. I'm having a hard time. There's another one. So I've got 1, 0, and 10, 1, which means this graph, if I convert this one to a table, to do a table, you press this little toolbar up here, and then you click on the table. That's the linear. No, this is the right one. So we were seeing... This is the linear parent function, right? Yeah, that is the linear parent function. I want this one. You press the toolbar and then the table. So again, there's the zero, one. That one is an inverse of this one up here, one, zero. They switch places. And then this one's got 10, one. So this one should have one, 10, which it does. So the inverses means that their ordered pairs are going to be swapped, okay? They switch places. Now, that is important for us when we look at a logarithmic, which I can sketch this one really quick. Okay. When we look at a logarithmic, that's not base 10. So let's read what it says. Because you can only graph base 10 logs on your calculator, you will need to use the inverse exponential function to invert the values from the table to graph the logarithmic function. Well, that's not true. You can use the graphing calculator that's in our class, and you can also use Desmos to graph these. So I'm going to show you that on Desmos, but I'm also going to show it to you by hand. Now, 
I don't want this video to be 1100 years long, so I'm going to do my best to go quickly. And if you need to rewind and rewatch, you can do that. But here we go. So this is just a different way to write y. So y equals log 2x. Going back to what I taught you, this would be log base answer equals exponent. Okay, so we know that y right here would be our exponent, okay, and that 2 would be our base, and then x would be our answer. If we were going to be writing this as an inverse and just doing one table. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to say, okay, well, if 2 was the base and we were dealing with an exponential equation, what we would have is we would have y equals 2 to the x power, if this was exponential, you guys. So then you would just make your table like normal, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, okay? So if it hasn't been shifted left or right, up or down, these would be the numbers that you would always want to use, just a good starting place. And then you would plug those in. So we would do 2 to the negative 2 power. Remember, if it's negative, that makes it a fraction. So this is going to be 1 fourth. Then we have 2 to the negative 1 power. Well, that's going to be 1 half. 2 to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the 1st is 2. 2 to the 2nd is 4. Okay? That's if it was exponential. But it's not exponential. It's logarithmic. Now, logarithmic is the inverse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this table here. And I am going to switch it. Now, it's still going to be labeled X and Y because it's still X and Y. That hasn't changed. What has changed is the position of your X and Y. Your X is going to become the Y and the Y is going to become the X. So this is going to be 1, 4, negative 2. They swap. Then it's going to be 1 half, negative 1. 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2. Everybody see that? So they just swap. Now, we're not actually graphing this one. This is just what you're using to get these data points. So I'm not graphing this one. I'm graphing log base 2x, which is this table here. So now that I have this table, I can graph it out. Now, if this graph goes all the way up to 10, and you're counting by ones, one fourth is little bitty. It's very, very close to the x or the y axis. It would be right past zero and then down to negative two. So I'm just putting that pretty much as close as I can get it to the line without actually touching the line. Same thing for this. This is one half negative one. So still very close. 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, 3, 4, 2. Did I just mess that up? I sure did. This is here, not there. I don't know if I had any white out. And then 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. Okay, so ignore that dot. I do have white out to fix that for us. Okay, so now that I have this, I've got a little bit of the curve that I'm showing here. I graph these dots. I'm going to extend this on because I know that this is an asymptote here because it is a log showing that curve. And then it's going to continue both ways. So I put an arrow on both sides. Okay. So that's how you could do it without a calculator. I don't need a calculator to do that. I can do this very easily in my head. And then I just flip the table, graph the flipped table. Okay, so we're looking for our domain. Remember that domain is our x values. So we don't need any of the negative x values. I can totally eliminate those. I want all the x's that are greater than zero. I'm not including zero because there's an asymptote there, which means it's never going to touch that. 
For my range, it's going down to negative, down, 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 and x is going this way as it goes to positive infinity, our y is going to continue to grow. So we want all of our y values. So you could say all real numbers, or you could say negative infinity um, to positive infinity with our um, parentheses. That's interval notation. If you wanted to use interval notation, you could do that. Now, remember in behavior we did talk about before, um, that's just what's happening to the in behavior. So as x approaches blank, y approaches infinity. So as y is going up, our x is also going to positive infinity. So that's his positive this way, positive that way. Our graph continues to grow, 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 grow. Okay, as x approaches blank, this goes, the y goes to negative infinity. So it's not going to be negative infinity because we're not going to negative infinity. We get to this asymptote here. So as it approaches zero, okay, as x approaches the zero, our y value approaches negative infinity. The x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. This one crosses the x-axis at one, zero. And our asymptote is the y-axis, which we label that y up and down. If it's running this way, if it's a vertical line, it's going to be x equals zero. Okay, cool. So let me run through this next one very quickly. So this one, same thing. If we had a exponential, it would be y equals one third to the x power. We would make the same table, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Then we would plug it in, 1 third to the negative 2 power. Okay, so that's actually going to end up flipping that fraction and making that positive 9. Okay, if you don't know how to do that, use a calculator. Then we have 1 third to the negative 1. It's going to flip that fraction and just give us positive 3. One third to the zero is one. One third to the first is one third. Um, one third to the second is one ninth. Okay. Again, if you're struggling with that, you can literally plug it in a calculator and do that. You don't have to do that by hand. I'm just trying to move quickly so this video doesn't take 17 hours. Okay. Then I'm going to do the inverse of that. Again, I leave my x and y the same. That's not changing. I just change the values. 9, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 1, 0, 1 third, 1, 1 ninth, 2. Then I graph my um, values. So we've got 9, negative 2. So 9, negative 2 is there. 3, negative 1. Negative one. Um, one zero. One third. One again. One third is going to be pretty close to that y-axis there, and then one ninth is super close to that. And so this one is still a logarithmic graph. It still has its asymptote here, but it is decreasing like so okay our range i'm sorry our domain is our x values again those are the same they're going to be greater than zero our range same thing we're going from negative infinity because this is going to continue to go down negative 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 and this is going to continue to go up all the way to positive infinity all real numbers as x approaches blank, y approaches infinity. So y is approaching infinity here, so it's approaching zero. And negative infinity is this way, that's going to be positive infinity. Okay, so these pretty much are just going to switch depending on whether it's growth or decay. Our x-axis for this one is still one, zero. And my asymptote is still x equals zero. So, why did this one have decay? Why is this one decreasing? Well, because our base was one third 
instead of the base being 2. If your base is greater than 1, you have growth, just like with an exponential. If it is less than 1, it is going to be decayed. Now, less than 1 means, I'm sorry, it's less than 1 but greater than 0. So you're dealing with a fraction right there. If you've got your fraction, that's what's going to give you your decay. Okay? All right. Now, this, this is a lot. Okay, I think I'm going to call it quits. We're already at 15 minutes, and so that's where we're going to start. I do want to show you how to do this on Desmos, um, even though I really want you showing your work like this. So practice doing it by hand on the ones that I'm going to give you for homework. Um, just like I am showing your work this way, and then you can check it in Desmos. So let me show you how to check it in Desmos really quick, and then we can be done. We'll finish it. We'll finish this lesson later. That's really the positive about this, guys, is like we're able to just kind of slow down, pump the brakes a little bit, and just take our time. Um, so I'm going to do my best to not overwhelm you and give you too much to fret about. So, okay, if you come here, we need to have not just common log, we need a specific base. So you have to press this button here called functions. So you're going to click on that functions button. Is my face in the way? It is. Move my face. Let's try now. Click here, click functions. There it is. Now, you have to click on the miscellaneous up top. Mine's already selected because I did that already. If you look here, LOG, that's common log, but if you look at this one, LOGA, that one allows you to put whatever base you want. So I can click on that. There's got the little box blinking here, so I can put the two, because that was what our first example was, and then you have your X and bingo there's your graph okay now again that's great but it doesn't really help us give us any specific points all it really gives us is like a sketch so if you want points you come up here to this little tool press your tool button then you can press that table then it gives you undefined because that's where it's approaching the asymptote one zero is going to be its x-axis two one would be a next good point then you can click on two and then just press enter if you're on a computer i'm not sure what you would do on a cell phone but if i keep pressing enter i can see some other points and you can see it's plotting them on the actual graph so i think that's really cool about desmos it just gives you a ton of information that is super helpful so that works on Desmos. So let me do that again using the second example that I went over. So, away. click on here. You have to go to functions. Click on the log with the base here. This time, the second example, the base was one third. So let's see, one divided by three. I don't think that's going to work. I don't want that 3 to be underneath the log. Let's see. I think I need to put like, no, okay, look, I messed it up. Um, functions with that log. And then I think I maybe need to do parentheses. Shoot. Okay, where are y'all when I need y'all? I need a fraction. Do this have a fraction? Button. I'm sure y'all are like screaming at me on your screen telling me like, Miss Cole, no, that's not what I want. Hold on, y'all. If you already know what you're doing, just stop watching this video. Okay, y'all. Let me try one more time. And then I'm going to give up. Let y'all figure it out. Just watch my videos. Okay, I'm pressing this function. I'm pressing this. We got that figured out. 
I need this to be one third. So one slash, let's try that. That's not gonna be it, I don't think. Let's try it, but I don't think that's gonna work. Put your X there, and then close your parentheses, graph. See, it's not gonna let me do that. Yeah, I know. Okay, well, hopefully between now and then I can figure that out. I don't know how to type a fraction in here, so if you're watching this video and you can help me out, do so because I don't know what to do, how to get that fraction in there. And like you can't use a decimal for one third, so that would not work. Okay, anyways, that's how you would do it on Desmos. You need to use this button here, and then we've got to have a fraction. I just don't know how to do that, y'all. So, fraction of this side? Yeah. Push that over. One. Backslash. What's back, like that backslash? Uh -huh. It just, it won't do it right, though. And the number. It, but it's putting the whole law oh. over that, so I don't know how to do it without putting that there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, y'all. I can't figure it out. But I'm sure one of y'all can and just, like, blast it to everybody else so they can know how to do that. Um using Desmos, but like I said, I taught you how to do it on paper without all of that, so you really don't need this feature. I just want you to use that as a check, so I will give you some to um, practice on your own. I'm looking for this. I do want to see this, and I want to see these answers here, so let me know if you've got questions. I'm only going to give you a few to do, probably two, I think, um, if that's what... Um, the the data comes with but okay listen so today's friday um you are supposed to work in this in class today so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make it due on monday but let's do monday afternoon so i don't want you to have to work on it over spring break so this would be that following monday do you know what the date of that is i don't have my cell phone but that not spring break Monday, the next Monday is when it would be due. Um, and let's say about like 2 o'clock. So for those of you that don't wake up until noon, you'll still have two hours or so on Monday to get that turned in um, and get that completed. And then we will finish this lesson with all the shifts on Monday. So we will quiz that second or that week that we come back after spring break, but it probably will be closer to Wednesday, I would think. Um, and then especially depending on what Mr. Badgley says, right now the grade book is locked. So I'm assuming at some point they'll unlock that, but I just don't know when. So I'll keep you posted. You guys ask me questions. Let me know what's going on. Sorry that this video was 23 minutes and I'm sure you're bored now. Love y'all. Happy spring break. Have a great break and stay safe and stay healthy. Bye y'all.